Hello, everyone. Hi. This, uh, so I'm Jinji, and we have Ken Ku over here. He's the safe investor. So yeah, today uh, we are going to share with you some very, very good, uh, some awesome things that you have not seen it uh, normally in, in YouTube or, or, or what uh, what the normal people has been showing you. We're going to share with you the microeconomy of, of the things and what is happening now in the current market in September and what usually happens in September and what is the current opportunity you can actually uh, capture it. So uh, is, is, the, is the market actually going to crash or is the market going to go up or is just a pullback, uh, be it in stock market or in crypto market, right? So we're going to talk about in general term in the macroeconomy view of it. So please type in the chat below in what do you want to see. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to share to you about technical uh, analysis chart uh, in the individual uh, crypto and individual stocks uh, on anything that you want to have a look at it, right? So today uh, I will going to share with you um, the overall market of it and then Ken going to talk about the September effect. Uh, so a little bit about Ken, right? He actually uh, successfully predicted six times of it of the market crash, six times of market crash, right? So prior to the market crash, of course, he, he pulled out all his money and then he put it right after the market crash. So definitely some some value, some gold, some gold as gold as Bitcoin gonna, gonna share it to you, right? So please tell me in the chat and tell us what happened uh, last week uh, or, or this this week from from last week from first of September until until this week. So that's been you know, around two weeks already. Please tell us what has actually happened in the chat below. Uh, also, please like and share uh, so that more people can actually benefit from from this thing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, without further ado, I'll just share my screen. Yeah. Right. So um, let me just put it on full screen. So last week, right? Um, actually, El Salvador actually approved um, Bitcoin as a currency uh, in the country, and it, it has been purchasing um, Bitcoin right after the dip. Of course, when after the right after the announcement of it, uh, Bitcoin have a flash crash of around four hundred billion in, in terms of market value, right? In terms of market valuation for the crypto market, yeah. So it's not just Bitcoin, it's total market actually just sell off right after the announcement. And then uh, the president actually just, just continue to, to purchase more of it. Yeah. So um, today, I'll move on and then talk to you about the market update. Right. So before we proceed, um, this is a disclaimer. This is not a financial advisors. Um, this is just a general sharing for educational purposes. Um, for, for your benefit, if you can capture some some value of it, uh, we will be very, very pleased of it, right? So uh, let's move on. So let's talk about the market. So in order to, to be a, a good investor, uh, I believe everyone should invest uh, to, to grow your money, to hedge against inflation and all this. So in order to be a good investor, right, you need to know the majority of people, what are they feeling, what are the sentiments, and then you do according to to um, a, a method that you, you set for it, right? Later I'll share with you what is my method and what's Ken's method. Yeah, so current current market sentiment, right, is bearish. So as you know, uh, there's a saying saying that like sell in May, go away, right? So you purchase it like towards the end of the year and then you sell it in May. And then um, the, after that, then you will have like um, some crash going on in between and then you buy again in the, in the, in the Q quarter four, right? So to, as of right now, um, this is last update, 13th of, um, 13th, 13th of uh, September, right? Hold on, uh, let me have that, get a pen. Right? This is last update, 13th of September, and the fear index is actually like 37 of, of it. So the, the grid is actually in green, the red is actually fear. So previous close, 34. One week ago, everyone was neutral. And then one uh, all month ago, of course, it's like a little bit of fear and all this. But one year ago, so we, we don't look into so far. We let's, let's look into the short term wise. Um, it is uh, very a lot of fear in the market currently. So what is happening to that one was actually just uh, the U.S. market, general stock market, and for Bitcoin itself, right? It is also at a fear. So uh, and then today is actually more fear than yesterday. Last week was extreme greed, and then you see what happened, right? 
So uh, when it, you know, Bitcoin actually pulled, uh, went all the way up to 50K and then it, uh, the last two weeks actually came down uh, to a good valuation or good support, if you like, right? So with the fear indicator, fear and greed index, we know that we are at a fear. But then what is the, what are the traders actually thinking? So this is the chart actually showing that um, in S&P 500, right? What are the traders actually feeling? So the traders, so how do you look at the chart, this chart? This is, um, the, look, follow me to the red line. Huh? The red line, the blue color actually means, right, a lot of buyer. And then the red is actually, when it comes down, then the buyer getting lesser. That means that they are at a fear. The market is at a fear. So in, in around August time or June time, right, um, people are at the lowest. They are at the like the most fear compared to a year ago, right? Um, yeah. So currently, as you can see, the, the everyone is getting bullish compared to the current scenario. It's, it's a bit contradicting, but this is what the traders are feeling like. So when you see there's a lot of buyers coming in, normally the market will pull back, right? So you can see there's a divergent between here and here. So as I would love it when there's a lot of fear. So when there's a lot of fear, I will normally get in. As you can see, when, when there's a lot of fear, the market actually goes higher and higher and higher. And when there's a lot of greed, the market actually will come down, pull back a bit, be it a flash crash or be it a, just a small pullback, right? Right, so moving on. So, um, sorry, moving on. This is the AII, American uh, Institute um, Sentiments. So I, this is not the latest. The latest will actually come out tomorrow. It will, it will come out on a weekly basis. So this is uh, data as of 8th of September. So as of, as of 8th of September, compared to 1st of September, the bullishness actually reduces. It actually reduces in terms of uh, the people who are bullish. More of them actually are at the sideline, uh, side they're neutral already. Although the fear indicator is actually getting lesser, but a lot of them is actually nowhere here, nowhere there. They are not buying, they are sitting at the fan, on the fans and, and, and seeing what, what, what pans out and then to decide later. But I believe uh, the, the new data coming out to tomorrow, you will have lesser bullishness and more fear already. Yeah, this is my, my thing. So what I will do, just like Warren Buffett, my seafood, right? Uh, he always said that um, when we attempt to be fearful, when others are greedy. So as I said just now, when people are greedy, right, you need to be fearful. When others are fearful, you tend to be greedy. Really go against to the sentiment. So that's how we always beat, beat the market by, by by doing the opposite, but doing the opposite in the right way, right? So so this uh this is another indicator about a, a white market. So just now is the current sentiment of it, right? So now. I'm going to show you about the raw materials. So why why raw materials can can be used as an indicator? So look at the chart right here. I'm showing copper and steel. What are the what what actually what industry actually uses um, um, these two materials in in a in a big chunk of way, right? So look around, look around. It's is your housing area, your constructions all your facilities or infra infrastructures, they will need a lot of steel, they will need a lot of copper, right? So this chart, as you can see for steel and copper, they are almost identical. What, how do you read this? So over here, there's a market crash, let's try the price go down and then there's a V-shaped recovery. So, um, and then people are still collecting, as you can see over here, the, the level of the copper, um, demand right is actually at the highest even right even higher than 2018 it actually means that the market is actually recovering at a very very fast pace and is continuing to to recover they are still recovering because because um the market the world is opening up and then the schools are opening um, everyone has been um, getting used to living together with COVID already so uh, and then all the infrastructures they are going they are, they are, they are catching up there are a lot of demand and the supply is actually actually getting lesser. They can actually do this. They can actually buy slowly and then let the, um, if the demand is actually lesser. But no, because of the demand is high, that's why they need to purchase the, the price at the high first, uh, at, at, the, at the current price. So they keep purchasing and demand is high, the supply is low, the price go up. It's, the, it's just as simple as that. So right, so uh, this is another indicator for the monthly wholesale trade. Right, this is um, as of September, 10th of September. 
uh, they are always one month behind, right? The, the data. So this is the bureau, uh, so the economic data bureau of the data, right? So as you can see, in compared to June to July, it actually increases in terms of the number. Although the percentage has actually dropped a little bit, but you can see that the numbers of the wholesale inventory, uh, they, they are getting, they, they, they are collecting more and more inventories. Uh, but when the inventories are going up, the demand need to come come together with the, with the together with the with the uh, inventory. If what it will happen this way, if the if the inventory actually go up and the demand actually goes down, right? Uh, it will it will definitely be a red flag for me, right? But then if you look at this chart, right? This chart is monthly inventory compared to the sales ratio. So what does that mean? It actually means that the the, the inventory and the sales is actually in the same way. It's going at the same way. It means right, the sales actually coming up. The, uh, there's a lot of orders coming in, and everyone has been ordering stuff and all this to purchase stuff. And then that's why they need to keep out all, all the uh, inventories for manufacturing, and they are not keeping up with it. This number is going down. It's actually they are not catching up with the order the demand order, right? This is actually music to my ears, right? So just now I mentioned about construction, right? This is another indicator. For July, right, and compared to June, you can see they're actually going up. They are steadily going up, right? So uh, construction has been going up. Raw materials has been going up. A lot of demand for housing. If you are um, locating in Singapore, you know that the property prices is actually go shooting to the moon, right? So uh, for the construction, right, you can see it's for the private sector, it's actually going up and up. The public sector, public sector is is um, almost at a horizontal, but then um, as as the new government coming in in the near future, I will see uh, with the bill the, that they recently passed. Actually, I would think that it will, it will actually go up, right? So this is the manufacturing PMI, right? So you need to you when you look at the materials is going up. So you need to see whether the manufacturing is actually catching up. So what are they talking about? They are talking about new orders, production are growing. Right, the production is growing. They need to grow a lot of production. And employment is contracting means that they are not hiring so much. But then I'll show you another chart later to show you why. Right. So the supplies and the deliveries slowing at a slower rate. So they, 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 the supply is actually slower, slow, slowing down um, for whatever reason. So it means that they're actually at a, a normalization phase already. Yeah. But then the backlog is growing. It means that the supply is not catching up. Right, so the backlog is growing means that the orders are coming in. The raw materials and the inventories are growing. The customer inventory is too low, does not catch up. You will have a big divergence. As you can, is if you are invested into semiconductors, you always can hear that um, they, they are lacking of material, the raw material. That's why they can't catch up to the production, right? So when the demand is high and the supply is low, what happened? The price will increase. That's why we see a lot of inflation. Right, a lot of inflation and um, a lot of prices are going up to the moon. Right. Right. So um, these are the job looks claim. So we are almost at the low. Uh, we um, we are actually at a plateau area, if you can see. So that's why um, the employment rate is actually at this level already, and they need they maybe need another. Uh, another injection from from the government to actually pump this down to the uh, to the low, but uh, we just want to see it going low. We don't want to see it going higher. So this is the indicator I'm seeing. Means that the market is healthy. Everyone is getting um, uh, more or less uh, lesser and lesser jobless people already in the market. This is very strong. So the key numbers that you Americans are following. So why am I looking into America so much? Because America is the strongest currency. Uh, that a lot is the most is the most is the widely used uh, currency that that, um, that the world are using now right so and then the us is currently the biggest market in the whole world as well a lot of country, countries actually pack their uh, their currency to the us us market so an, an unemployment benefit declined to a new pandemic low to, to 310,000. it is this is actually very very good it means that the jobless count actually uh, getting lesser and lesser and is beating the forecast. The forecast actually thinks that uh, it, is, it will have a jobless count of 305,000, but now we just, last month we see 310,000, right? So the, as, we, as we mentioned a lot of times, the world economy is recovering 
the business is uh, is opening, the school is opening, we are living together with COVID. Yeah, right. So this, so what happened next? Um, our beloved President Joe Biden has actually passed, uh, managed to, to convince the Senate action and they passed one trillion dollar infrastructure bill. It's not 100 million, it's not one, uh, it's not 500 million, it's one trillion infrastructure bill. Last year, we talked about um, uh, the previous president uh, spending heftily. They just uh, just keep keep printing money, but then Joe Biden actually printed more. It is actually a good thing because it helps with the infrastructure to actually build the, the bridges and the roads and and um, the deteriorating roads. So it built out initiatives. So what this actually means? It actually creates job market. So it creates job. And also with all this thing, right? With all the manufacturing, all the all the raw materials coming in, all the money pumping into the market, uh, the manufacturing will go up and up and up. So this one will help the manufacturing to catch up with the supply, right? So that the inflation doesn't keep going up. So this this view, this view right? Is also uh, it, it, there's also one one very um, uh, special thing included in this view. Actually, Joe Biden included um, crypto into this bill. It is actually uh, a taxation system on on cryptocurrency. So, crypto taxation means that when when uh, when you earn when you have capital gain, right? People actually you need to pay tax to the U.S. government. So, all the uh, capital gains will used to pay pay off this bill. Um, not all, uh, I mean, part of it will use used to pay off this this bill. But it, it might sound like a, a bad thing because you might be earning lesser. Uh, but it is to me, it's a very very good thing. Uh, one because uh, I'm based in Malaysia, and, and a lot of people, a lot of he people here, uh, we are based in Singapore, Malaysia. Uh, we don't have the capital gain tax. Uh, second, when it actually means that the government is adopting or actually recognizes this new kind of asset. So when they actually put a structure into a new asset. It actually means that it, it is a good thing. It is it, it, it will have it is very bullish to me. Uh. So it is is a uh, amazing thing to 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 hear, of, right? So um, this is my last slide. Um, yeah. So hold on. Uh. So let me see. Let me bring out um, Safe Investor, right? So uh, we will need uh, Safe Investor will talk about the the market sentiment of the September effect and the potential trades that we can do at the current situation uh, according just just purely to technical analysis um, for fundamental analysis um, sorry we will need to do it on the next session uh, but then you can also ask us uh, privately later uh, but for, for now today we are, we are just sharing about technical analysis only right so ken over to you okay thank you thank you wow very very good sharing i actually learned a lot as well from the, all the raw material and all the, all the stuff okay so um just a little bit about myself uh, for those who actually don't know me uh, let me share my screen um i am uh, i am the safe investor so uh this is my my facebook page my slogan is to never lose money so when we are investing or we are trading i don't want you guys to lose money and i don't want myself to lose money because we all earn hard we don't like we earn like we maybe uh, we spend eight hours a day or maybe 10 hours a day some people spend 12 hours a day uh earning money and it's all our hard work earned money so we don't want to lose that um also so there is a book called the investor sharing good i'm the author of this book if you want this book you can download it from amazon okay today i'm going to talk about the september effect okay so now the september effect is actually on investopedia okay so some people are thinking that you know stock trading or cryptocurrency trading investing has been always like a big big topic and people want to understand when is the best time to get in and when is the best time to get out so if you look on investopedia people do talk about the september effect okay so now what is the september effect okay so so but uh, until now no one has been able to explain why uh, stock market or crypto markets, like any investment, um, tend to drop more in September. And this is proven. So let me show you the chart. So according to this chart over here, uh, this is a study 
done in or published in, on September 7th this year, very, very new study. So he actually published this and said that this is the historical monthly returns of the S&P 500 index from year 1928 to 2021. Okay, the blue, this times it means the number of up or down each month. So this is not the percentage. This just means the time it, that you start from the, um, you calculate from the start of September until the end of September, did the, did the stock market or the S&P 500 go up or go down? So you can see this, uh, in all the months, this September, it went. It only went up 42 times, while it went down 50 times. Okay, it cal it, it calculated all the months, and you can see September went down 50 times, only went up 42 times. So just that's just like the the statistics, right? Now let's let's look at the percentage, the average percentage of going up or down. So you can see that the average percentage for September is a minus 4.6. And the uh, the up percentage is only three point two. So compared to other um, other months, you can see May, right? Like uh, um, um, you, you, like there was a big big cryptocurrency drop in May, and there was another drop in September. So there could be another drop in October. This could be, um, okay. So so by just by looking at this, you will kind of if you if you have like gain some profits in April or gain some profits in August, maybe just maybe why right, you want to consider like taking your profits. Okay. Just maybe. Right. Okay. So let's go on uh, and look into the explanation of the September effect. It, no one had been really a, uh, been able to really explain it, but some of the, here's what some people think. So, it says here the September effect is not uh, limited to the U.S. stock market, but associated with markets worldwide. Some analysts con co consider the negative effect on the okay is biased as investors change the portfolio at the end of summer to cash in. So basically, um, if you if you look at the chart, right? So let's look at some charts. So let's just look at the S and P five hundred. So if you look into the S and P five hundred, you can see that you know this is a very very big uptrend super big uptrend and we all know that the stock market needs to rest and it needs to rest for, for, for um in, you know once in a while it has to rest right so when something has has gone up higher then it has a higher chance to come crashing down when something has gone lower and lower already it means that it has a higher chance to rebound and go back up right okay so now when if you look at the s p 500 there was another big correction in last year september right here and then there was another correction in October. Okay, so so that's that kind of you know matches with this matches with this September and October uh, effect, right? And also, if you look at uh, let's look at Bitcoin. So you can see Bitcoin right here. When did it crash? So it crashed in May, right? It crashed in May over here, May all the way to the bottom, went back up, da da da, and then. When did it crash again? It crashed again in September and it reached the peak in September um, 6, right here. So now it's no, it's still, it's still in the bottom, it's still at the bottom, right? So this is the September effect. Now, okay, so um, I don't want you guys to, to panic too much, okay? So this is just based on statistics. So I'm um, just saying that when you are investing or when you're even doing trading, uh, you can probably look at this chart and think that uh, what um, maybe I should take my profits as I enter the months of September, or maybe take some profits at the end uh, uh, at the end of April, right? But it, if if you believe in something, right, maybe take good opportunity uh, to buy it at, in May or buy stuff in September and buy stuff in October, right? Okay, so that's the September effect. Um, average percent change each month. You can still see that this is the average percent change. Um, so basically in September, it's like almost like, you know, everything, everyone else is going up only in September, it went down. So minus one, um, historical returns. Uh, th this is the year chart. So we're not going to look into the year. So yeah, so this is, this is the September effect. So uh, just according to the statistics, for some reason, uh, markets tend to drop more in September. Okay, so now, so what is the what is the really the the never losing money mindset or the never losing way, right? Because we know that trading cryptocurrency is a little bit dangerous, right? Well, if you don't know how to do it, if you didn't do your stop losses or your cut losses and take profits, then you can still lose money, right? So now the 
Uh, my Warren Buffett is my, my Shifu as well. So I do follow his value investing method. So what I always tell my students or tell my other um, my, my uh, people who ask me, they I, I always tell them, um, if you want to invest something, you might need to find the value of, of, of something, right? So just for example, uh, just for example, um, we all know that, you know, there's MF, NFT coming out and all that stuff coming out. So um, this kind of maybe explains why Ethereum like rebounds faster because there's a lot of need for the Ethereum and there's the Ethereum blockchain, the Ethereum net. So this kind of explains why Ethereum, you know, rebounds faster when there's more demand then it drives the price higher. Now, as for Bitcoin, Bitcoin is just a pure currency. People do hold it and to gain the, and they hope to, you know, at the, there's limited amount of Bitcoin. So it's hope they're hoping for the, the, uh, the price to go up, right? So that's the value of Bitcoin. But uh, Ethereum uh, does have more practical use. So maybe, just maybe in the short term, this is why the price of Ethereum rebounds faster, okay? So now, however, um, so if, like for me, if I want to do trading, then I would, uh, I would probably buy uh, more Ethereum than Bitcoin just because um, following the value investing method, I find the value and I think there's more value in my personal opinion uh, comparing Ethereum to Bitcoin, I think there's more practical use and more value in Ethereum. There's more needs, so therefore, I think Ethereum is a better choice for um, for for investing. Now, but then again, I I don't want to lose money, so I use the sa crypto savings account. With crypto savings account, um, I don't need to worry about the the market going up or down, up or down, or up or down. So this is me. This is my real account. You can see for a crypto savings account, it's a very simple method. You just need to open an account. This acts like a bank. You deposit you know, your USDC coins, you, you, your your Ethereum, your blockchain, all, all these cryptocurrency accounts. You deposit into this wallet. Okay, it's, okay, this is a third platform. So, and then they pay you interest weekly. So it's as simple as that, just like a bank. So this is my this is my USDC coins, and I you know I look at the interest rate here. I do get paid like twenty one dollars, nineteen dollars, nineteen something dollars, and twenty dollars. It, it pays me every week. So that that's my interest um, for USDCs. Okay. So I'll, actually, I'll, I'll show you if you have like other currencies, like you have like crypto, you have like Bitcoin or Ethereum, and if you if you don't want to um, if you want to put it into like somewhere to gain interest, definitely this is a good place to put in. So let me just show you. Now this is my real account. Um, so you can put in just for example, if you like Bitcoin, if you are holding onto Bitcoin, right? You can see that Bitcoin, um, you actually do get a 4.8% interest rate, and there is no lock-in time. You put it in here, and then you uh, you gain interest every week. So this is my uh, this says payout in five days. So if this will start, this will accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. So this is a very very safe way. So let's say if you like Ethereum, right? You uh, the, the the Ethereum right now, their interest rate is fixed at 5.5%. Deposit it in here. And then you get your interest. It's a very, very uh, safe method or well, safer for me. Now, what is the risk, right? What is the risk? So this platform is called UHODLer. So I've done my research on UHODLer and I think it's pretty safe. So, but then I'm spreading all my money into different savings accounts. So don't put all your money in one basket. So this is only a, a part of my money. So don't put all your money in one basket. So I'm spreading it into other different savings account. But I've done my research on this one. So I, I, I like the UHODLer the best one uh, right now. So I, if you if you like this, right, I will give you guys the link. But just remember, before you transfer anything into this platform, or I, I'm calling it the bank, um, just remember to you know do your research and make sure that you believe in this platform as well. Okay, so let me give you guys a link. If you didn't get it, uh, if you didn't get it last time, chat with private chat. Okay, I'll I'll post a link later. Okay, I'll post a link later. Okay, um, now, now for stocks, for stocks. So now we kind of know that what is a safer method of not really trading, but really investing, right? So we can see that, uh, so what is the most hottest thing right now? We know that, you know, cryptocurrency, a lot of people are doing crypto mining, right? There, there are companies that are doing cryptocurrency mining. So as an investor, if you see the value of cryptocurrency, the value of blockchain, the value of Bitcoin, the value of Ethereum, all that stuff, 
why not invest in a cryptocurrency mining company, right? Okay, so uh, the, the stock that I'm going to talk about today is called Riot Blockchain. This is Riot Blockchain. Um, so basically, it, it's very uh, it's a Bitcoin mining uh, company. It's actually pretty big in in the U.S. Um, so, uh, but just you know, remember to do your own research. Remember the name called Riot Blockchain. They have a lot of um, if you if you look at the news and all all other other stuff, it's been saying that this company, if you especially if you look at the revenue, their revenue has been increasing. Okay, so that's that's one good signal that I like. You know, revenue increase. Okay, so now why do I like this and why I think this is a good time to buy now? Um, just because based on the pure technical analysis, right? Um, you can see this hitting a, a diagonal support right here. And then you can see, you know, also low KD, um, also, you know, EMA 200 and all that stuff. So, if, and, and look at the price. This price is only $29 or 30 anyway almost $30, right? So if you if you like cryptocurrency mining, instead of buying into the currency itself, right? Buying into a real company, just for example, right? The Riot blockchain or uh, this company called Hive as well. Uh, this is the Hive blockchain technology company. So um, yeah, so why not invest in the blockchain technology instead of the cryptocurrency itself? I, I do think this is, a, is a, a safer way. Right, but then the gain can be uh, a, a lot less because the volatility is less. Uh, it's less than the uh, the cryptocurrency itself. Okay, now um, just something. If you do want to buy Ethereum, right? Ethereum, you can actually see here that there is a there is a kind of like a, a mid and strong support around this price, which is three thousand one hundred and forty six dollars around here. You can see this kind of forms a support line uh, down here. So if you want to do a little bit of trading. I would I uh, would suggest that maybe buy some like just few uh, some Ethereum around three thousand one hundred forty six dollars around this price over here, okay. Um, and also, um, yeah. So if you have any questions or any um, any stocks that you want to know about, um, you, you can put it in the chat and below. Um, but let me tell you right now, uh, the best time, uh, best chance to buy, I would say, is Hive and Riot. Uh, these two companies, uh, especially Riot, right now it's at a very, very low point. So if you like this mining concept, maybe uh, buy Riot. Also, Hive is actually okay. Look at the price, only three dollars. So maybe if you if you want to risk a little bit of your asset, you buy a few shares and you spend a little bit of money. And um, yeah, and if the company flourishes, it flourishes. And what's the maximum you can lose? The maximum you can lose is you know four dollars, right? So that's the the safe mindset. That I, I have, but um, I, I do like this few hundred account a lot because it just pays me interest, and I don't need to worry about anything. So that's that's my way of investing. Okay, uh, and uh, Jingyi, uh, back to you. Right, right. Thanks, thanks, Ken. Um, so Ken, 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 can you stay on the on the line? I would like to ask sure. a few questions. So sure, before sure. Uh, everyone actually um, but go ahead and and use the U holder, right? Remember mm -hmm. to do your own due diligence. Because this is a third uh, third party platform, mm -hmm. and you are putting your coins into the third party holder means right. Yeah. If there is anything happening to you, to to the to the you holder, you mm -hmm. will kind so, you have the potential to lose all your coins. So yes, um, mm -hmm. right. So uh, at the, you you they are acting like a bank, but then they don't have a real license to actually give you certain things. They they are actually earning through. Through the spreads and all this so so bear in mind on all this you can also put your money uh, put your crypto into the cold wallet uh, that would be no um no no interest you will not gain any interest you only gain like capital gain but that would be the safer way to do it so it depends on your risk appetite please do your own due diligence and you 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 might you you will need to hold on to if you believe into the asset you need definitely need to hold on to that in the safest possible way, right? So, so Ken, um, let me ask you: What do you think of the current market? Are they too heated up? Uh, do you think it's, it's just a pullback? So, just guys, just for your information, we did not rehearse on all this. So this is like a live question. <laughs> okay. for, sure, for sure. Ken. Okay, so all right. Do you think it's a pullback or is a, a flash? as a real crash. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let me let me show you. Okay, because Jing has. Uh, okay. Let me show you. Um, all right. So, um, okay. So. 
L let me let me just show you guys something. Um, this is called a Fibonacci retracement. I'm not gonna dive too deeply into this, but some of you might know this tool. This is called the Fibonacci retracement. This is a very very powerful and strong tool, and that's how I use it to predict the market crash. Okay, so let me just show you guys. So this is the Nasdaq QQQ. So I'm just gonna do it on big stocks or big index um, indexes. So you can see that um, we, when we want to kind of predict a market crash, right? Um, we kind of this tool. Okay, this tool is super duper powerful. So this is this is last year in March. Okay, this is last year in March right here. Uh, this was the that was the the big first rally, and then there was the big crash uh, correction in September right here, and then went back up. It went down in October again, so that's the October effect. It went up, and then it broke this previous line. It went all the way up to this purple zone right here. Okay, and then, okay, and then it rebounded back to this previous high. So this is forming the support line right here. That's a that's a strong support, previous high right here. And then now, you know, at the purple line, it will keep on rebounding, see if it breaks the support. Now it's, it has broken this, oh, sorry, resistance line, broken the resistance line and going up to this green zone right here. Now, the interesting about this is, let's say if you pull this Fibonacci retracement up to the next level right here, you can kind of see this is almost touching this purple zone right here. Okay, plus right now it's September again. Okay, um, so let's say if you, let's say even if you're, you're a, um, a new beginner and you don't know anything, uh, especially when the market, uh, um, uh, there is a lot of people who don't know anything about the stock market. And you know, they just got in on this trend, right? And then you, you, know, you see this big, big profit right here. And maybe, just maybe, and right now everyone is kind of afraid of the Fed and you know rising the interest rate and all that stuff. And then I just want to go back to the September effect again. Um, I would say, compared to other months, um, I would say a uh, a potential correction could be coming. That's my uh, that's my met uh, that's my my point of view. So guys, if you don't know already, um, Ken is actually a guy who has predicted six market crash uh, previously. So um, he's saying that, please be cautious. Uh, do not go all in at this time. Uh, but then be, do your own due diligence. If you, if you think uh, that our, our view is wrong, you can go ahead and do, do whatever you think. But in our, in our opinion, we think that the market is a little bit at a, at a resistance or at a high side. You will need a potential pullback some more plus together with the September effect. Um, and then we just now I show you the, in the chart uh, it is showing there's a lot of greed in the market um, in the traders world. So uh, I would be a little bit cautious. Maybe uh, there's no harm taking taking some profit off the market and get in back when when the market is showing um, some 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 stability or recovery uh, after a potential or, or non-existent crash. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, Ken, yeah. let me ask yeah. you another question. Um, yeah. So because there's no no questions in the in the in the chat, sure, right? Sure. So let me ask you to, to benefit everyone else. Uh, just now you mentioned about um, Hive and Riot, right? What do you think yeah. of Mara and MicroStrategy? What what is your opinion on 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 them? They are also a mining company. Uh, for MicroStrategy, they are also a company that purchases uh, Bitcoin. So they are almost the same 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 but different. Um, ah, so okay. So in, 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 you can just share in technical point of view, what do you think about it? Yeah. Okay, uh, so what's the symbol for it? MSTR. Okay. Uh, Marathon is Mara, M-A-R-A. Yeah, okay, yeah, I think I know this one. And what's the other one? MSTR. MSTR, okay. All right, so let's have a, just have a quick look. Okay, so you can see this pullback coming. Um, so let's have, let's just have a quick look and see if there's anything good. Okay. So by the way, so, you know, it's Fibonacci restraints, but kind of, you know, this is like, it always rebounds at this point coming back down. Uh, so we want to kind of find the strongest support so we can actually see, right. There's a, this is, this support line is, you know, it's very strong around $23, one, one rebound, two rebounds, a previous high right here. And plus the Fibonacci retracement, it's fall, it's dropping. If it does drop down to this yellow zone, 
then it, it is definitely a, a strong support. However, you can see here, just um, you can see here, there's also a, I would say this is like a, um, I would say it's a weak, weaker support um, around here. This is the previous high, some previous highs right here. And so only two points, two dots, and it has broken this uh, this previous high already. So it, let's say if we if we uh, look into the six months one, we can see that you know it's touching this 200 EMA, touching this uh, this KD is low already. So um, yeah, so I, if you if you like this company, if you if you want you believe in this company, right? Right now is probably a good time to do your first entry and then uh, do a bigger entry when it hits this yellow zone at the bottom, which is $23. Um, if you if you believe in this company and let's do a diagonal, uh, diagonal, um, uh, uh, it's called support and resistance. See if we can find anything good. Just for example, let me see if there's anything good. Um, hmm. Okay, hold on, let me check. Let's check on this, see if there is a, okay. So this is kind of, okay. So yeah, so like the even channel. if the, yeah, the diagonal one is actually okay, right? So there's previous high, previous high, connecting to previous lows and previous lows. So right now it does seem like a, a, a plus to the EMA 200, right? So maybe it's a good time to, to do your first buy. But then also this is the this is the weaker support um, weaker support. So I do like to look at the one year range, which gives me a, a better um, understanding. Um, so yeah, but the six months does say if you want to do short term trading, right? Maybe a good time to enter. Um, so there you go, guys. Um, there is another bonus for you guys. So there's like Hive, there's Riot, and there's another thing. There's another current opportunity is called Mara, but we are doing purely based on technical analysis. Um, Ken is a, a, a very um, um, experienced investor, so please do your own due diligence. These are not uh, financial advice. It's just us showing you some chart, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, so I just want you know, if you guys go and if you have the chance to learn Fibonacci retracement, super, super strong tool. Um, so uh, just, this is a micro strategy, right? As you can see, micro strategy. This yellow zone right here, uh, it's a pretty strong support. One time, two time, three times and four times right pretty, and you can see the rebound happening already so maybe uh micro strategy uh maybe around you know five hundred dollars right right there that was a pretty good entry point um also the second buying point will be 420 uh, 25 dollars which is this uh strong support right here so right now uh i would say maybe if you you know if you if you want to do some trading maybe uh right maybe micro strategy and maybe um, hot, uh, what's the other one? Riot. Uh, I would yeah. probably say these two are the best chances. But however, right? That's just my own opinion. So if there, there's that's more. Right. That's, yeah, more, more things to look okay. into. So guys, um, as if you can picture the, if you can put pieces of puzzles together, as what we said, right? Just now we talk about the overall market of it, and then we talk about uh, U.S. printing money, and then the inflation is coming in, and we are talking about some finite uh, asset uh, that we, there's a potential of, um, of holding of their value and doing it in a safe way. We have four of the bonuses show, uh, sharing to you guys. Um, yeah, so please do your own diligence and, and I hope you guys will benefit from this session. Uh, so give us a like if you, if you like our session. And, and yeah, if you have any question, please type in the chat. Um, yeah, so, so Ken, do you have anything to share? Uh, nope. Stay safe. Oh, okay. oh, my view is like I think this. I think the cryptocurrency market, right, based on the valuation and based on the technical analysis, it looks like it's going to go back up now, right? But then, if you if if you buy into it and if it does go back up, right, just maybe, uh, maybe take some profit in October, just maybe, <laughs> because of, of because of this because of this. And yeah, yeah, because yeah. of, of uh, last year, we can see this NASDAQ technology, um, this QQQ, there was a, uh, a big correction, right? So it's kind of, I feel like the same thing is happening. It went down, crashed, you bring back, and then in October, uh, you can see here, October reached the peak, and October crashed again. So uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But right yeah, now, so I'm, yeah, go, go ahead. 
Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, sorry, sorry. Oh, 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 so I'm I'm bullish on the cryptocurrency and because you know inflation, so people do uh, uh, have to buy things, you know, stocks or cryptocurrency. But then, uh, the, and on the stock market, I think it's too high. The stock market is too high. Yeah. So um, normally, there's like um, like funding moving around from sectors to sectors, right? Sectors rotation, we call that. So um, with all this coming in and all the market. Uh, Macroeconomy of it, we are we are bullish on certain assets. Uh, we are also not so bullish on certain assets. S and P five hundred as a whole, they they hold a big chunk of technology stocks. That's why Ken is talking about QQQ. Uh, the ticker symbol is called QQQ. Um, that's this is mainly of the of the high tech stock mark, high tech stock um, product, right? So with that, um, yeah, we will end the session now. If you have and if you are rewatching this one, please um, just type in the chat if you have any questions. Uh, if you want us to to give another view, uh, just type in the chat. Uh, anything we will we'll just reply. Let me see it. Right. Um, yeah. So have a good day and stay safe. Remember to take take the opportunity to to go in, in into a normal um, into portfolio sizing by going to, into tranches. Just now, Ken always said that. He will go in first tranche and then he, will, he might be going in second tranche if, if the price continues to go down. But then when it go up, goes up, so please take some profit off the market in, in, in October. So that's the summary of today. Um, yeah, thanks for having us and stay safe. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Stay safe. Okay, remember, yeah, stay safe. <laughs>